Hi and welcome back to the Malt Miller YouTube channel. Today we're going to discuss how you can take one of our core values of freshness one step further and recreate that at home. So in this video we're going to be talking about milling your own malt at home. Now, as Rob's already said, that's one of our core values here. It's all about freshness. Rob, why is it so important? Actually, there's a really good story here. We started with just selling hops. Yeah. Okay, the business started just selling hops. I decided that actually we want to push it further and we wanted to sell malt as well. So I searched the country and looked for a really traditional maltster, which I found in Fawcett's yeah. up in Castleford. I contacted Fawcett's and they said, Actually, we want you to come and see us. So I made the trip up to Castleford, had a fantastic tour around the Maltins. It was an, you know, it's an amazing place. Yeah. And sat down in James Fawcett's office with him and said, I want to be able to buy your malt so that I can put it into the homebrew world. And he said to me, I will only supply you with my malt if you crush that malt fresh to order for your customers. Wow, okay. Because he said, if you, if you don't, you'll be sending out malt that is not in the right proportions. Yep. It will separate out in the bag in transport. And I won't put my name to that product. I'll only put my name to a massively high quality product. And he also said, that's going to land you with a whole set of new problems. But you need to get over those if you want me to supply you with, with malt. We got over those problems. That's why we supply whole malt, crush fresh to order. What an amazing story and what a powerful influence that's been on the business, okay? You know, you look at everything we do now and freshness is absolutely our biggest value and you can trace it all the way back to that story 13 years ago. It's absolutely amazing. And the very name itself, the Malt Miller, that's exactly where it came from and that's thanks to uh, James Fawcett. What we're going to do now is explore how you can take this core value of ours even further at home by crushing your own malt. How are we going to do that, Rob? OK, we've got a couple of options as far as the products available to do this. We sell a grain mill from Grainfather. Yeah. It's a really nice product. Electric. Um, you can adjust the speed on it. You can adjust the crush size really easily. We also do a more budget version uh, that's hand crank that can be used with an electric drill as well. Yeah. We're actually going to show you in this video using the more budget version. Yes, we do have a video about the Grainfather one if you're interested in that. Yeah. There'll be a link up here for you to click on and take a look at that if that interests you. But like you said, in this video, we're going to have a look at the far more hands-on manual method yeah. um, using one of our, our two roll mills. So Rob, we've got a grain mill here on top of one of our buckets. We're going to talk through how to put it together in a moment and some of the features and benefits. But before we jump into any of that, why might somebody want to do this at home instead of having us do it for them? We sell malt crush fresh to order. You doing this at home means the malt's going to be even fresher. Right, OK. So that's one thing. Secondly, you can keep a wider range of malts at home so that, it, you know, safe in the knowledge that they're not going to go off. Yep. Crushed malt doesn't last. Whole malt we know lasts for a couple of years, really. Yeah, okay. because it, it's all trapped inside the grain in its protective shell and husk. Yep. As soon as you as soon as you crush that, it starts oxidizing. One of the biggest advantages is being able to dial in the crush size for your specific system. Mm -hmm. And actually, it might be that you've got two or three different ways that you brew at home. You might do a really simple brew that you do Brew in a bag, for example, yep. a smash brew. I'm going to knock it out. Brew in a bag. You can crush it really, really fine. You might also have a grandfather, more complicated brew, a step mash, for example. You can actually dial this in so it's the correct crush size for the grandfather or any other system. It makes it ups the efficiency for your specific method of brewing. OK, and gives you that ultimate flexibility, right? Because we offer uncrushed, crushed and fine crush and our team of millers obviously regularly check and dial it in based on what malt you're purchasing yep. but you can do that at home to your very specific needs and go even further than we can exactly that i mean really dial it in for your specific grain bill so you might be putting a recipe together that's a wheat beer for example so you want the 
the grains that are huskless, the wheat, for example, that needs to go through on a far finer setting than the barley does. Yep. Um, and you can actually dial that in at home. I completely see that there are some benefits and also as a, you know, a home brewer, you're gonna be wanting to get even more hands-on and involved with the ingredients, right? So I completely see how this talks to that side of people that uh, make their own beer at home and, and other crafty things, you know, in the kitchen. Absolutely. How do we go about putting this together then? Okay, so it comes as the actual base of the malt mill comes in one piece. So there's yep. no putting together at all there. What we have to do is make the hopper, which comes in four separate pieces, plus the uh, rubber trim around the top. And then we have to back off a couple of the nuts on the body of the malt mill so that it slots together. And, and when we were putting this one together, it had uh, the blue protective film on, didn't it? On the hopper pieces, which you need to peel off beforehand. Yeah, exactly. In industry, when you buy sheet metal, it comes with that protective uh, sheeting on. Yeah, just, just take that off both sides. And we do, when we put the hopper together, it's down to personal, personal preference, but actually I would prefer the less amount of complications on the inside, yep. less for the dust to get trapped and everything else. Yep. So the, the fold on the corners on the outside. Exactly. The nuts for the, um, the nuts and the bolts on the outside. The nuts on the outside, outside indeed, yeah. We also need to screw the base on so that it fits on our bucket nice and securely. That's fairly straightforward in terms of putting together. One thing that is worth doing is taking your time when we're putting together the hopper you know, be patient. They are quite small nuts and bolts and do it once, do it right. Small nuts, fiddly James. Yes. The last job is simply to put the hand crank on. In effect though, you're rarely gonna use the hand crank. It's really easy just to connect this up to a battery or electric drill. So once we've got the mill assembled, what's the next steps before we can move on to actually running some malt through it? We need to align the rollers. How do we go about doing that? We turn the mill completely upside down because this space here is actually really stable. So we've got yep. a nice stable base to work from. Once we've done that, we can back off the locking nuts, which means that the adjusters can be moved freely at both ends. Okay. And actually we can have a play with that and you can actually see exactly how the adjusters move the rollers further or closer apart. The first thing we need to do is actually realize that each end of the adjusting roller is independent. So we need to align it to make sure that the crush gap between the line, between the rollers is equal from both sides. Once you've eyeballed that the adjusting roller is at its widest point right across the width, you then need to mark with a Sharpie at its widest point. And on this mill, that is 0.1. We then know using the mark that we've put on with our Sharpie that the roller is the same both ends. Therefore the gaps equal right across. So if you make an adjustment on one end yep. and mirror it on the other side, we know that the gap between the two rollers is gonna be the same every time. Exactly. Which is what adjusts how fine we're crushing the mold. Exactly that. Are there any other additional setup steps we need to do at this point? No, we simply need to dial it in by putting some mold through. We've just milled a whole bunch of malt through our grain mill. Let's talk about how we go about that in the operation, Rob. What are your tips for operating the mill? Okay, basically, pretty much everyone's gonna be using an electric or a battery power drill, as we've just demonstrated. Um, we need to make sure that the, the drill or the crank handle is going in the right direction. Okay, which direction does it need to be going? Righty tighty. Okay. Or, if you're an adult, clockwise. Fine, what happens if we don't? It throws the malt back at you and it won't crush it. Okay, nobody wants malt in their eyes. No. Nope. What other operational tips have you got? Speed-wise with the drill, don't just wang it as fast as you possibly can. And that's, it's a lot easier to do that with a, with a, uh, a battery drill, just to control that pace of it. Um, it doesn't want to be too fast. So just put it on the slow setting on the drill and at a, a medium pace. Rob, we've got five different categories of malt or grain that we sell yep. um, in front of us that we run through the mill. Why have we done that? Right, the grains are different sizes. And we need to make sure that for our specific system, that the grain is crushed correctly so that we have got the right amount of flour. Yep. We've got the right amount of husk and the husk is ideally 
as whole as possible. Yeah, so not disintegrated. Exactly yeah. that. We don't want to completely pulverize it. We can cr crush it much finer if we're doing a brew in the bag. Yeah. In any other situation, it needs to be coarser because we don't want a stuck mash. No, we don't. And the husk acts as actually that filter bed, doesn't it? Exactly that. So we want the husk to stay as whole as possible. And actually, ideally, you want it so that you can just squash the kernels between your fingers and they just completely break up break apart releasing their goodness out yep. but the husks are rem remaining whole and what about uh, malts that don't necessarily have a husk something like you know one of the carafa malts from Viaman or wheat malt for example okay i'll put those two in in two different categories actually dark malts roasted malts tend to completely shatter as they go through they can be because they don't tend to make up a really large proportion of a malt bill they can go through on a relatively fine setting and be and be really quite finely crushed, yep. even even in something like a grain father, just because they're not in a a great big proportion of, of the malt bill. Yeah, we're talking like a couple of hundred grams maximum in a batch. Exactly that. Uh, anything else on like huskless malts and grains? Yeah, they have to go through on a much finer setting. Okay. Um, and we can really crush them really really quite fine. Now we have found with this mill, we've actually chosen the largest kernels we could find in our out of our selection of hundreds of malts, and we've actually found our very smallest one as well. Yeah. So let's talk about the five different ones that we've got here. So we started with a base malt, didn't we? Which was just one of the best ale malts, I think. Yeah. Um, which is, like you said, one of the larger, more plump kernels that needs to just be cracked. You know, it needs to be cracked, needs to be able to access all the starch inside, but not pulverized. Yeah, exactly. Unless we're doing fine crush. Yeah, yeah. Then we used a crystal malt. Did we adjust the settings at all for a crystal? The crystal malt tends to explode much like the roasted malt does because of the crystalline structure inside it. It can be crushed really quite fine. Right, okay. Um, and then we used uh, some wheat malt. Yeah. Now, what did we do there? Interesting. So the husk lift grains can go through on a, and need to go through on a much finer setting. Not only do we not have the husk to worry about, but also the kernels are smaller. After we've done the wheat, we then looked at some rye, right? Because that can be quite tricky as well. And we know that the team in our mill room have some really specific approaches towards how they mill rye. With rye, it needs to be crushed really quite fine. So you're going to need this on one of its very lowest settings, yeah. um, even in a even in a standard crush. Right. Okay. So to wrap up with our sort of test run today, yeah. we actually went and found the smallest possible grain that we have, and that was Golden Naked Oats, yeah. right? And they are absolutely tiny. Yeah, they are tiny. Yeah. Yeah. So how do we approach that, and what tips would we offer to customers trying to mill those at home? Okay. Actually, something that I wouldn't normally recommend, but it's necessary with this very smallest grain. So we tightened the mill up as close as the rollers would go. We put it through once, didn't crush it enough. So we actually put it back through again and actually that came out that came out really quite good. So if you were looking to have a recipe at home that includes golden naked oats or one of those really, really small grains such as that, Generally, oats in general. Yeah, you probably want to make sure that they are milled separate to the rest of your grist. You know, whereas some things, if you've got a couple of different base malts that, or a base malt and a caramel malt, you could mill those through at the same time. Exactly that. But I would definitely keep uh, malts with husks on separate to the to the smaller kernels and the huskless yeah. uh, malts and grains. I would keep them separate. Awesome. I hope this shows you that this is another facet to the homebrew hobby. It really helps you dial in your specific grist for your specific system. Yeah, I think if you're an all grain brewer at home, this helps you get more connected to the product, yep. enhance that freshness, and really, like you said, dial it into your system. It's a good fun thing to do, and it's really easy as well. If you've enjoyed this video, we've got stat loads of other content on our YouTube channel. Make sure you're subscribed, hit the bell for notifications, that way you'll keep up to date with everything we're doing here at Malt Miller HQ. And don't forget, you can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. Have a great brew.